Mazumdar Shaw is India's best known woman entrepreneur. Outspoken, passionate about science and her work, Kiran's story is as much about grit and determination as it is about drive and talent. The founder of Biocon has fought many battles. Starting from when she decided to shake up things and become a brewmaster like her father. Something that was unheard of in India. When I met up with her, I began by asking her what has motivated her to go after all that she has achieved. Well, you know, a lot has to do with your upbringing. And I think uh, my parents, especially my father, uh, was extremely uh, encouraging uh, in terms of my pursuing a vocation or a professional career. Uh, he never wanted to differentiate between his daughter and his two sons. And he said, look, you know, you can do just as much about anything that your brothers can. Mm -hmm. So don't sort of uh, cramp your style or, or uh, you know, make yourself feel that you can't uh, address certain opportunities just because you're a woman. Uh, I think that made a big difference, you know, and I think uh, uh, I would say that a lot of women who are successful today owe it to their families and their support systems. Mm. And that not enough of that is happening, is it? Yeah, I think we have a lot of uh, societal baggage that we carry even today. I think there's a huge need to shift that societal mindset about women and uh, the working woman mm. because I think today we have a, a cultural and societal mind step, uh, mindset that's very steeped in old traditional values and the role of a woman and you know where she should be and where she shouldn't be and certainly the workplace is one place where society believes that it's not a woman's place. When you started off as an entrepreneur, the odds were against you and you've said that many times. Uh, is it easier for a woman to be an entrepreneur now or do you think, in a sense, there are many hurdles? You know, when I say that I had a lot of credibility hurdles when I started uh, my company, uh, really it was about, uh, you know, perception hurdles, you know, that a woman can't run a business, a woman doesn't have the ability to manage money, uh, a woman uh, cannot uh, really endure a business, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. Why? Because they felt that uh, uh, we don't have the bandwidth or the, or the kind of endurance to uh, face challenges and stress and what have you. So I think that was what really, you know, goes against most women and I think if women start believing that that is so then they give up very easily. So I think in my case yes I had those several challenges to be taken seriously as a woman getting into business uh, but I think every time I overcame a challenge I got more confident. But you endeavoured you know and that's a very interesting facet about you because you could have said, hey, you know, it's not worth the effort. It's not, anyway, I'm an accidental entrepreneur. I didn't really need to do this. This is not, was not my burning ambition. But you endeavored and you went on. What was that that made you go on? See, I always feel that anyone who has a sense of purpose hmm. when you are starting anything, I think that gives you that power of endurance. If I was doing things in an aimless way, if I was doing things as a hobby, if I was doing things because I had time on my hand, I don't think I would have endured. But I went into creating Biocon with a huge sense of purpose and with a really big spirit of challenge. Mm. I wanted to take on challenges and prove people that I could, you know, that a woman could run a business. That was the challenge I took on. You know, if you remember, I came back to India as a brewmaster and I couldn't get a job only because I was a woman. And, you know, the usual sort of reasons and excuses I was given was, oh, you know, it's going to be tough for you, this is not a man's job, you know, you, you, it's too challenging for a woman to take on this kind of responsibility. So when I got this opportunity to start my own company, I was determined to prove those people wrong. I said, let me show you how a woman can manage a business and how she can deal with uh, labor and labor unions and let me show you how I can manage money and manage people and, and manage the business. So I think that was the kind of challenge I took on. But more than the challenge, I had a very deep sense of purpose. 
because I was trying to pioneer a new sector which was based on science. To me that was very exciting, you know. And one of my uh, raison d'etre was I said, you know, India is a country where women are present in large numbers in all scientific academic programs and yet very few women pursue science as a vocation or a career. You know, when you come into scientific institutions, still not enough women in these scientific institutions doing academic research. Uh, in companies, in the R&D space, again very few women in the R&D space. So I said, why don't I make that one driving, uh, you know, uh, objective, which is let me create a company where women would pursue a professional career in science. So today I'm really happy that in many parts of my uh, research, uh, you know, uh, um, divisions, um, in some even 50% of them are women, in some 30% are women. So I think that's something which I'm very pleased with. That's interesting that you point that out, uh, Kiran, because if you see any academic institution, women do very well academically, much better than men in most cases, and the equal numbers who pass out. But gradually as they go up the corporate ladder, they keep falling off, you know. In the scientific community, that's even more stark because, you know, you have a great talent pool that's not being able to develop. What's the problem, you think? I think, you know, um, women do very well academically because they are working towards something. You know, so that's why I said the sense of purpose is they want to graduate. They want to have an academic qualification which gives them some kind of identity in life. So that's for the educated woman, I think that's very important. It's a passport, mm. you know, in, in some sense. But the moment uh, they come out of the academic portals and when they get into the workplace, then the whole orientation is very different. Because then you have to own problems, you know. You don't just sort of take on tasks. You own problems, you own challenges. That is very stressful. And I find that when they then have to juggle their home responsibilities with their professional responsibilities, it becomes too much. Because again, in our society, men don't share those responsibilities at home. So then they take on the whole load at home and then they take on the whole load of their responsibilities at work. And when that becomes too stressful, then they opt out. So I think you need to uh, create more role models for young women to emulate, to feel comfortable that they can also, you know, aspire for success and attain it. As a woman making it in business which was seen as a man's world and that too in a sector which was new then, Kiran set off on an incredible journey and helped Biocon achieve global recognition. She has received many honors and accolades for her entrepreneurial achievements and she believes that a lot of women are now following her example and coming into their own in the field of science in India. You know, I think when I look up, when I look around the biotech sector, there are a lot of women in, in, in the biotech sector. You know, some of them, of course, followed my example. So, in fact, there was a time when the biotech sector was dominated by women. Hmm. Even Manju Sharma, the secretary of Department of Biotechnology, was a woman. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, you know, there were a lot of women in, 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 in the biotech space. And today there remains a, quite a large presence of women, women entrepreneurs, uh, women professionals in life science uh, businesses. But uh, I certainly believe that for any sector uh, to have this recognition uh, that women are equal partners in, 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 in the workplace, I think does take uh, you know, time and does take more women to be inducted into the workplace. So certainly we see this happening in our organization, we see this happening in the biotech sector, in the life sciences sector, I certainly think that you see more women coming into the workplace, but yes, it takes time. I think the banking sector is uh, particularly very fortunate because, you know, ICICI Bank actually uh, nurtured the women's brigade 
and there was one person who was responsible for that, Mr. Bagul. And he was responsible for your success. And he was also responsible for me. So what was it in him that? allowed i mean him to create that kind of bad with you you interacted very well and he gave you your big break right in business so i think mr bagul is a renaissance man he's a he's a he's a very liberated thinker and i think he is one of those uh, uh, new age men i would say who was ahead of his time he clearly recognized that uh, you know women had great potential and great leadership potential and that it was being suppressed they were not given the opportunity and so i think what he decided was that he would actually nurture these women to come up and every one of the uh, women uh, that are playing a leadership role today in in the nationalized or indian banking sector are his uh, you know girls i would say <laughs> but that was one end of the spectrum uh, kiran you've got some great anecdotes of how difficult it was to get your first loan uh, when you were an entrepreneur has it changed or are women still seen in the bucket of the less privileged who need sops see i think the, the women still want sops which is i think a little you know disappointing i don't think women should ask for sops because i remember uh, when i was uh, you know just starting my company and i had great difficulty accessing capital i remember going to the karnataka state finance corporation and asking for a loan and um, you know the the manager they saying oh madam we have a very good scheme for uh, scheduled caste scheduled tribes disabled and women entrepreneurs and i said look if you're going to club me with disabled and scheduled caste scheduled tribes then i don't want such a loan on principle because i'm neither scheduled caste nor am i disabled i'm not a handicapped person i want equal opportunities i want to be treated equally like you would treat a male entrepreneur so he was a bit taken aback but then i fought for my uh, equal rights so to speak and i got it mm. you know you also a chairperson of iim bangalore it somewhere it starts at that very very basic level where you have women coming into the workforce going through professional training and somewhere they fall off what can you do to nurture youngsters to to show them the path what should be done do you think so first and foremost i think you need to uh, create more role models for young women to emulate to feel comfortable that they can also you know aspire for success and attain it because one of the things uh, that does happen today is a lot of young women get daunted by looking at somebody like me and saying oh i can never be her which is wrong actually i keep telling everyone if i can do it you can too but i think most people only see me where i am today i don't think they see the struggle i've gone through nor do they see the struggle any other man goes through either you know i think everyone who who builds a company or an organization over time has gone through a very challenging time but uh, i think women um look at someone like me saying no this is not the kind of success i can attain but if they see more successes of women who are running smaller businesses but are independent and enjoying their independence i think that should give them that aspirational uh, sense mm -hmm. now um, how do you do it i always find that all women go through a sort of a, a, a journey or a path where they come to a very important inflection point if they go over that inflection point then they endure and they stick with their jobs and their professions if not then they give up and resign themselves to a, a domesticated role i have always felt that women don't take enough risks the inflection point that you're referring to is normally when you start a family when when you are trying to juggle your responsibility at work and at the at the home where do you think women uh, go wrong because chanda was talking about the fact that you know women have inhibitions they don't want to try to balance it if they if they give it a good shot maybe they'll figure out a way around it but they don't endure over there you know that that's where they normally give up what's your sense of it Well I think that's very true because I think basically as I said you know once you have a certain commitment at home of raising a family 
uh, you're sort of emotionally drawn to that responsibility saying that you know this is something which I have to give my very best to and then your job at that point in time does take second place and rightly so you know I mean you know when you're a new mother obviously your your priority is your child so I think your job does take a secondary position for that time and and we've had many you know uh, colleagues at the workplace who have actually taken time off and come back you know I think companies do need to obviously provide time for that particular uh, phase in people's lives where they have to make some time to give priority to a newly born child but then quickly the mother has to learn to adjust to her balancing uh, her job responsibilities and her home responsibilities and that's where the husband comes in if the husband plays a very supporting role it's very easy for her to juggle these responsibilities if the husband does not chip in and then it becomes her sole responsibility the pressure is so high that she has to give up you know her job mm. what can organizations to do to make this period easier I think organizations are doing a lot mm. I think organizations have got very good maternity policies I think organizations do a lot to accommodate these kind of phases but I think the challenge really lies with the woman I think the woman has to make up her mind that her job is as important and I think uh, again I go back to the point that it depends on the family support that she has again I also feel that women who have got uh, pretty well paid jobs make that decision very easily because that that you know for a family that has a has a you know a double income kind of a family where the wife and husband are earning pretty reasonable incomes I don't think it augurs well for you know the wife to give up her her income uh, whereas in a case where a woman is not earning a very high salary and she's at lower or middle management which has got a very modest salary scale there it's easier for her to give up my question to you is that you know every time I speak to you you don't like being referred to as a woman leader you know you just ref like to be referred as a business leader and an entrepreneur who's earned her stripes and it irrespective of whether she's a woman or a man when did you cross that hump so to say where you said that hey I'm not I'm not successful because I'm a woman I'm not extra special because I'm a woman entrepreneur I'm just a great entrepreneur and I, I want to endeavor to do that well you know I think I took on equal challenges you know when I was when I was starting my business it was an unheard of business it was a new business that itself was a ch big challenge uh, you know getting funding was a big challenge getting people to work for me was a big challenge and every one of these when I overcame them you know made me feel more confident gave me a slight you know it gave me a greater feeling of leadership building and I think I came to a point where the moment my business started succeeding I, I got a great sense of confidence because obviously I was uh, you know pioneering a business and once my business started getting credibility uh, obviously then it made me feel that you know I had you know done something right I I had anyway I did I wasn't seeing myself as a woman entrepreneur I, I gave you that reason why I just kept looking at myself as an entrepreneur and really even today I say to any woman entrepreneur who says I need SOPs I said don't ask for SOPs because what women really need are equal opportunities those are not there we don't give women equal opportunities because we slot them into jobs and roles and responsibilities and if we do that we are not giving them equal opportunities and if you don't give women equal opportunities they don't gain that confidence of competing with men the moment you compete with men you know you feel that you're on an equal plane mm. what would your advice to women be women who are struggling somewhere to find their feet and you know possibly need to be shown a, shown a way out of it what would your advice be first and foremost I think women must have a sense of independence I think if you feel independent if you feel that you have economic independence it gives you a sim tremendous sense of confidence mm -hmm. and I think that gives you the uh, you know raison d'etre to endure and to stick with what you're doing and to pursue a professional career and to uh, pursue a 
a, a, a job opportunity. I think that's very important. I think most women don't have that sense of economic independence. Mm -hmm. That's what really I think uh, plagues most women in terms of their self-confidence and uh, their ability to endure with what they are doing professionally. Do you think women take enough risks in life? Do you think women fall too easily into comfort zones which they don't want to shake them out or, uh, themselves out of? Do you think these are intrinsic things that women who, who are planning careers should be wary of? You know, you raised a very, very important point. I've always felt that women don't take enough risks. We do seek comfort zones because we are very protective by nature. I think we, we don't want to take big risks for our families. We'd rather, you know, sh protect our children and shield our children from anything and we don't want our children to also take risks. That's a natural instinct we have in ourselves. And therefore I believe women are not willing to take on big risks. And so women who take risks and succeed are the ones who make it. Mm. You know, there is one Kiran Mazumdar Shaw for a hundred thousand who are not even, you know, able to stand up to their families. There's a huge difference in India. What needs to be done to bridge this gap? Can you, because you're very, very vocal about national issues, about getting the right kind of attitude in, in governance, in, in uh, urban, you know, or, or citizen activism, etc. What needs to be done, you think? I really think women have it in them to do great things. You know, I, I have a lot of women in Biocon playing a leadership role. I, for instance, Biocon Foundation is headed by a very strong woman. Mm. And uh, she goes across the country, she, you know, reports back to me uh, on the various very innovative schemes we are doing in healthcare. She's talking to everyone on a one-to-one. -one. I mean, people are, you know, she's a tough woman and, and, you know, she's no pushover. So I think even government officials actually pay her a lot of respect. So I think she's, she's somebody who has got a lot of confidence. I would say to anyone and any woman who wants to pursue a career, that it all starts with a self-belief and self-confidence. And... Every one of us has it in ourselves, but then it all starts with taking on a challenge. Are you willing to own a challenge? Are you willing to solve a problem? If you can solve that problem, then I think you realize what you're capable of doing. But as long as you keep taking instructions to solve a problem, or as long as you rely on somebody else to solve the problem, you will never get that sense of confidence. So in a nutshell, take ownership. Absolutely. Of, of the job as well as yourself. Thank you so much, Kiran. Thanks, thanks, Mini.